IEEE 802.11 IEEE 802.11 is part of the IEEE 802 set of LAN protocols, and specifies the set of Media Access Control MAC, and Physical Layer PHY, protocols for implementing Wireless Local Area Network WLAN, Wi-Fi computer communication in various frequencies, including but not limited to 2.4, 5, and 60 GHz frequency bands. They are the world's most widely used wireless computer networking standards, used in most home and office networks to allow laptops, printers, and smartphones to talk to each other and access the Internet without connecting wires. They are created and maintained by the Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers, IEEE LAN slash MAN Standards Committee, IEEE 802. The base version of the standard was released in 1997, and has had subsequent amendments. The standard and amendments provide the basis for wireless network products using the Wi-Fi brand. While each amendment is officially revoked when it is incorporated in the latest version of the standard, the corporate world tends to market to the revisions because they concisely denote capabilities of their products. As a result, in the marketplace, each revision tends to become its own standard. The protocols are typically used in conjunction with IEEE 802.2, and are designed to interwork seamlessly with Ethernet, and are very often used to carry Internet protocol traffic. The 802.11 family consists of a series of half-duplex over-the-air modulation techniques that use the same basic protocol. 802.11 to 1997 was the first wireless networking standard in the family, but 802.11b was the first widely accepted one followed by 802.11a, 802.11 grams, 802.11n, and 802.11 acres other standards in the family, CF, H, J, are service amendments that are used to extend the current scope of the existing standard, which may also include corrections to a previous specification. 802.11b and 802.11 grams use the 2.4 GHz ISM band operating in the United States under Part 15 of the U.S. Federal Communications Commission rules and regulations. Because of this choice of frequency band, 802.11 BNG equipment may occasionally suffer interference from microwave ovens, cordless telephones, and Bluetooth devices. 802.11B and 802.11 grams control their interference and susceptibility to interference by using direct sequence spread spectrum. DSSS and Orthogonal Frequency Division Multiplexing, OFDM, signaling methods, respectively. 802.11a uses the 5 GHz uniband, which, for much of the world, offers at least 23 non-overlapping channels rather than the 2.4 GHz ISM frequency band offering only 3 non-overlapping channels, where other adjacent channels overlap. See list of VLON channels. Better or worse performance with higher or lower frequencies channels, may be realized, depending on the environment. 802.11n can use either the 2.4 GHz or the 5 GHz band, 802.11 acres uses only the 5 GHz band. The segment of the radio frequency spectrum used by 802.11 varies between countries. In the U.S., 802.11a and 802.11 grams devices may be operated without a license, as allowed in Part 15 of the FCC Rules and Regulations. Frequencies used by channels 1 through 6 of 802.11b and 802.11 grams fall within the 2.4 GHz amateur radio band. Licensed amateur radio operators may operate 802.11b-g devices under Part 97 of the FCC Rules and Regulations, allowing increased power output but not commercial content or encryption. 802.11 technology has its origins in a 1985 ruling by the U.S. Federal Communications Commission that released the ISM ban for unlicensed use. In 1991 NCR Corporation AT&T now Nokia Labs and LSI Corporation, invented a precursor to 802.11 in the EU region, the Netherlands. The inventors initially intended to use the technology for cashier systems. The first wireless products were brought to the market under the name Waveland with raw data rates of 1 megabit per second and 2 megabits per second. Vic Hayes, who held the chair of IEEE 802.11 for 10 years, and has been called the father of Wi-Fi was involved in designing the initial 802.11b and 802.11a standards within the IEEE. In 1999, 
The Wi-Fi Alliance was formed as a trade association to hold the Wi-Fi trademark under which most products are sold. The major commercial breakthrough came with Apple Inc. adopting Wi-Fi for their iBook series of laptops in 1999. It was the first mass consumer product to for Wi-Fi network connectivity, which was then branded by Apple as Airport. One year later IBM followed with its ThinkPad 1300 series in 2000. The original version of the standard IEEE 802.11 was released in 1997 and clarified in 1999, but is now obsolete. It specified two net bit rates of 1 or 2 megabits per second, bit slash s, plus forward error correction code. It specified three alternative physical layer technologies, diffuse infrared operating at 1 megabit per second, frequency hopping spread spectrum operating at 1 megabit per second or 2 megabits per second, and direct sequence spread spectrum operating at 1 megabit per second or 2 megabits per second. Of the latter two radio technologies used microwave transmission over the industrial scientific medical frequency band at 2.4 gigahertz. Some earlier Valon technologies used lower frequencies, such as the US 900 MHz ISM band. Legacy 802.11 with direct sequence spread spectrum was rapidly supplanted and popularized by 802.11b. 802.11a, published in 1999, uses the same data link layer protocol and frame format as the original standard, but an OFDM-based hair interface, physical layer. It operates in the 5 GHz band with a maximum net data rate of 54 megabits per second, plus error correction code which yields realistic net achievable throughput and theme at 20 megabits per second. It has seen widespread worldwide implementation, particularly within the corporate workspace. Since the 2.4 GHz band is heavily used to the point of being crowded, using the relatively unused 5 GHz band gives 802.11a a significant advantage. However, this high carrier frequency also brings a disadvantage. The effective overall range of 802.11a is less than that of 802.11b/g. In theory, 802.11a signals are absorbed more readily by walls and other solid objects in their path due to their smaller wavelength, and, as a result, cannot penetrate as far as those of 802.11b. In practice, 802.11b typically has a higher range at low speeds. 802.11b will reduce speed to 5.5 megabits per second or even 1 megabit per second at low signal strengths. 802.11a also suffers from interference, but locally there may be fewer signals to interfere with, resulting in less interference and better throughput. The 802.11b standard has a maximum raw data rate of 11 megabits per second and uses the same media access method defined in the original standard. 802.11b products appeared on the market in early 2000 since 802.11b is a direct extension of the modulation technique defined in the original standard. The dramatic increase in throughput of 802.11b compared to the original standard along with simultaneous substantial price reductions led to the rapid acceptance of 802.11b as the definitive wireless LAN technology. Devices using 802.11b experience interference from other products operating in the 2.4 GHz band. Devices operating in the 2.4 GHz range include microwave ovens, Bluetooth devices, baby monitors, cordless telephones, and some amateur radio equipment. As unlicensed intentional radiators in this ISM band, they must not interfere with and must tolerate interference from primary or secondary allocations. Users of this band, such as amateur radio. In June 2003, a third modulation standard was ratified, 802.11 grams. This works in the 2.4 GHz band, like 802.11b but uses the same OFDM-based transmission scheme as 802.11a. It operates at a maximum physical layer bit rate of 54 megabits per second exclusive of forward error correction codes, or about 22 megabits per second average throughput. 802.11 grams hardware is fully backward compatible with 802.11b hardware, and therefore is encumbered with legacy issues that reduce throughput by tilde 21% when compared to 802.11a. The then proposed 802.11 grams standard was rapidly adopted in the market starting in January 2003, well before ratification, due to the desire for higher data rates as well as to reductions in manufacturing costs. By summer 2003, most dual-band 802.11a-b products became dual-band-slash-tri-mode, supporting A and BG in a single mobile adapter card or access point. 
Details of making B and G work well together occupied much of the lingering technical process, in an 802.11 grams network, however, activity of an 802.11 B participant will reduce the data rate of the overall 802.11 grams network. Like 802.11b, 802.11 grams devices suffer interference from other products operating in the 2.4 GHz band, for example wireless keyboards. In 2003, Task Group PMA was authorized to roll up many of the amendments to the 1999 version of the 802.11 standard. Arivma or 802.11 ma, as it was called, created a single document that merged eight amendments, 802.11a, b, d, e, g, h, i, j, with the base standard. Upon approval on March 8, 2007, 802.11 Rivma was renamed to the then current base standard IEEE 802.11 to 2007. 802.11 N is an amendment that improves upon the previous 802.11 standards by adding multiple input multiple output antennas, MIMO. 802.11 N operates on both the 2.4 GHz and the 5 GHz bands. Support for 5 GHz bands is optional. Its net data rate ranges from 54 megabits per second to 600 megabits per second. The IEEE has approved the amendment, and it was published in October 2009. Prior to the final ratification, enterprises were already migrating to 802.11n networks based on the Wi-Fi Alliance's certification of products conforming to a 2007 draft of the 802.11n proposal. In May 2007, Task Group TGMB was authorized to roll up many of the amendments to the 2007 version of the 802.11 standard. REVMB or 802.11MB, as it was called, created a single document that merged 10 amendments 802.11K, R, Y, N, W, P, Z, V, U, S, with the 2007 base standard. In addition, much cleanup was done, including a reordering of many of the clauses. Upon publication on March 29, 2012, the new standard was referred to AGE 802.11-2012. IEEE 802.11 Acres-2013 is an amendment to IEEE 802.11, published in December 2013, that builds on 802.11n. Changes compared to 802.11n include wider channels, 80 or 160 MHz versus 40 MHz, in the 5 GHz band. More spatial streams, up to 8 versus 4, higher order modulation, up to 256 com versus 64 com, and the addition of multi-user MIMO, MU MIMO. As of October 2013, high-end implementations support 80 MHz channels, 3 spatial streams, and 256 com, yielding a data rate of up to 433.3 megabits per second per spatial stream, 1300 megabits per second total. In 80 MHz channels in the 5 GHz band. Vendors have announced plans to release so called Wave 2 inch devices with support for 160 MHz channels, 4 spatial streams, and MU MIMO in 2014 and 2015. IEEE 802.11 Add is an amendment that defines a new physical layer for 802.11 networks to operate in the 60 GHz millimeter wave spectrum. This frequency band has significantly different propagation characteristics than the 2.4 GHz and 5 GHz bands where Wi Fi networks operate. Products implementing the 802.11 Add standard are being brought to market under the YGIG brand name. The certification program is now being developed by the Wi-Fi Alliance instead of the now defunct Wireless Gigabit Alliance. The peak transmission rate of 802.11 add is 7 gigabits per second. TP-Link announced the world's first 802.11 add router in January 2016. IEEE 802.11f, also referred to as Wi-Fi and Super Wi-Fi, is an amendment approved in February 2014. That allows VLAN operation in TV white space spectrum in the VHF and UHF bands between 54 and 790 MHz. It uses cognitive radio technology to transmit on unused TV channels, with the standard to king measures to limit interference for primary users, such as analog TV, digital TV, and wireless microphones. Access points and stations determine their position using a satellite positioning system such as GPS, and use the Internet to query a geolocation database, GDB, provided by a regional regulatory agency to discover what frequency channels are available for use at a given time and position.
The physical layer uses OFDM and is based on 802.11 acres. The propagation path loss as well as the attenuation by materials such as brick and concrete is lower in the UHF and VHF bands than in the 2.4 and 5 GHz bands, which increases the possible range. The frequency channels are 6 to 8 MHz wide, depending on the regulatory domain. Up to four channels may be bonded in either one or two contiguous blocks. MIMO operation is possible with up to four streams used for either space-time block code, STBC, or multi-user, MU, operation. The achievable data rate per spatial stream is 26.7 megabits per second for 6 and 7 megahertz channels, and 35.6 megabits per second for 8 megahertz channels. With four spatial streams and four bonded channels, the maximum data rate is 426.7 megabits per second for 6 and 7 megahertz channels and 568.9 megabits per second for 8 megahertz channels. IEEE 802.11-2016 which was known as IEEE 802.11 REVMC, is a revision based on IEEE 802.11-2012, incorporating five amendments, 11A, 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 11AD, 11 Acres, 11F. In addition, existing MAC and PHY functions have been enhanced and obsolete features were removed or marked for removal. Some clauses and annexes have been renumbered. IEEE 802.11a, published in 2017, defines a Valon system operating at sub 1 GHz license exempt bands. Due to the favorable propagation characteristics of low frequency spectra, 802.11a can provide improved transmission range compared with the conventional 802.11 Valons operating in the 2.4 GHz and 5 GHz bands. 802.11a can be used for various purposes including large-scale sensor networks, extended drainage hotspot, and outdoor Wi-Fi for cellular traffic offloading, whereas the available bandwidth is relatively narrow. The protocol intends consumption to be competitive with low-power Bluetooth, at a much wider range. IEEE 802.11i is an amendment to the 802.11 standard that added new mechanisms for a faster initial link setup time. IEEE 802.11i is a rebanding of 802.11 ad for use in the 45 GHz unlicensed spectrum available in some regions of the world, specifically China. Alternatively known as China Millimeter Wave, CMMW. IEEE 802.11ac is an amendment to the 802.11 standard that will enable pre-association discovery of services. This extends some of the mechanisms in 802.11u that enable device discovery to further discover the services running on a device, or provided by a network. IEEE 802.11x is the successor to 802.11 acres, and will increase the efficiency of VLAN networks. Currently in development, this project has the goal of providing 4x the throughput of 802.11 acres at the user layer, having just 37% higher nominal data rates at the PHY layer. IEEE 802.11a is a standard that is being developed. It is an amendment that defines a new physical layer for 802.11 networks to operate in the 60 GHz millimeter wave spectrum. It will be an extension of the existing 11 AD, aimed to extend the throughput, range and use cases. The main use cases include, indoor operation, outdoor backhaul and short-range communications. The peak transmission rate of 802.11a is 20 gigabits per second. The main extensions include, channel bonding, 2,3 and 4, MIMO and higher modulation schemes. Across all variations of 802.11, maximum achievable throughputs are given either based on measurements under ideal conditions or in the layer 2 data rates. However, this does not apply to typical deployments in which data is being transferred between two endpoints, of which at least one is typically connected to a wired infrastructure and the other endpoint is connected to an infrastructure via wireless link. This means that, typically, data frames pass an 802.11, WLAN, medium, and are being converted to 802.3, Ethernet, or vice versa. Due to the difference in the frame, header, lengths of these two media, the application's packet size determines the speed of the data transfer. This means applications that use small packets, for example, VoIP, create data flows with high overhead traffic, i.e., a low good butt. Other factors that contribute to the overall application data rate are the speed with which the application transmits the packets, i.e., the data rate, and, of course, the energy with which the wireless signal is received.
The latter is determined by distance and by the configured output power of the communicating devices. The same references apply to the attached graphs that show measurements of UDP throughput. Each represents an average, UDP, throughput. Please note that the error bars are there, but barely visible due to the small variation, of 25 measurements. Each is with a specific packet size, small or large, and with a specific data rate, 10 kilobits per second to 100 megabits per second. Markers for traffic profiles of common applications are included as well. These figures assume there are no packet errors, which if occurring will lower transmission rate further. 802.11b, 802.11 grams, and 802.11 and 2.4 utilize the spectrum, one of the ISM bands. 802.11a, 802.11n and 802.11 acres use the more heavily regulated band. These are commonly referred to as the 2.4 GHz and 5 GHz bands in most sales literature. Each spectrum is subdivided into channels with a center frequency and bandwidth, analogous to the way radio and TV broadcast bands are subdivided. The 2.4 GHz band is divided into 14 channels spaced 5 MHz apart, beginning with channel 1 which is centered on 2.412 GHz. The latter channels have additional restrictions or are unavailable for use in some regulatory domains. The channel numbering of the spectrum is less intuitive due to the differences in regulations between countries. These are discussed in greater detail on the list of VLAN channels. In addition to specifying the channel center frequency, 802.11 also specifies, in Clause 17, a spectral mask defining the permitted power distribution across each channel. The mask requires the signal be attenuated a minimum of 20 dB from its peak amplitude at plus or minus 11 mHc from the center frequency, the point at which a channel is effectively 22 MHz wide. One consequence is that stations can use only every fourth or fifth channel without overlap. Availability of channels is regulated by country. Constrained in part by how each country allocates radio spectrum to various services. At one extreme, Japan permits the use of all 14 channels for 802.11b, and for 802.11g and 2.4. Other countries such as Spain initially allowed only channels 10 and 11, and France allowed only 10, 11, 12, and 13, however, Europe now allow channels 1 through 13. North America and some Central and South American countries allow only. Since the spectral mask defines only power output restrictions up to plus or minus 11 mHc from the center frequency to be attenuated by minus 50 dBr, it is often assumed that energy of the channel extends no further than these limits. It is more correct to say that, given the separation between channels, the overlapping signal on any channel should be sufficiently attenuated to minimally interfere with the transmitter on any other channel. Due to the near-far problem a transmitter can impact, desense, a receiver on a non-overlapping channel, but only if it is close to the victim receiver, within a meter, or operating above allowed power levels. Confusion often arises over the amount of channel separation required between transmitting devices. 802.11b was based on direct sequence spread spectrum DSSS modulation and utilized a channel bandwidth of 22 MHz, resulting in three non-overlapping channels. 1, 6, and 11. 802.11 grams was based on OFDM modulation and utilized a channel bandwidth of 20 MHz. This occasionally leads to the belief that four non-overlapping channels 1, 5, 9, and 13, exist under 802.11 grams, although this is not the case as per 17.4.6.3 channel numbering of operating channels of the IEEE standard 802.11. 2012, which states in a multiple cell network topology, overlapping and or adjacent cells using different channels can operate simultaneously without interference if the distance between the center frequencies is at least 25 MHz. And section 18.3.9.3 and figure 1813. This does not mean that the technical overlap of the channels recommends the non-use of overlapping channels. The amount of interchannel interference as seen on a configuration using channels 1, 5, 9, and 13, which is permitted in Europe, but not in North America, is barely different from a three-channel configuration, but with an entire extra channel. However, overlap between channels with more narrow spacing, for example 1, 4, 7, 11 in North America, 
may cause unacceptable degradation of signal quality and throughput, particularly when users transmit near the boundaries of AP cells. IEEE uses the phrase rig domain to refer to a legal regulatory region. Different countries define different levels of allowable transmitter power, time that a channel can be occupied, and different available channels. Domain codes are specified for the United States, Canada, Etsy, Europe, Spain, France, Japan, and China. Most Wi-Fi certified devices default to rig domain zero, which means least common denominator settings, i.e., the device will not transmit at a power above the allowable power in any nation, nor will it use frequencies that are not permitted in any nation. The rig domain setting is often made difficult or impossible to change so that the end users do not conflict with local regulatory agencies such as the United States Federal Communications Commission. The datagrams are called frames. Current 802.11 standards specify frame types for use in transmission of data as well as management and control of wireless links. Frames are divided into very specific and standardized sections. Each frame consists of a MAC header, payload, and frame check sequence, FCS. Some frames may not have a payload. The first two bytes of the MAC header form a frame control field specifying the form and function of the frame. This frame control field is subdivided into the following subfields. The next two bytes are reserved for the duration ID field. This field can take one of three forms, duration, contention-free period, CFP, and association ID, AID. An 802.11 frame can have up to four address fields. Each field can carry a MAC address. Address 1 is the receiver, address 2 is the transmitter, address 3 is used for filtering purposes by the receiver. Address 4 is only present in data frames transmitted between access points and an extended service seed or between intermediate nodes in a mesh network. The remaining fields of the header are The payload or frame body field is variable in size, from 0 to 2304 bytes plus any overhead from security encapsulation, and contains information from higher layers. The frame check sequence, FCS, is the last four bytes in the standard 802.11 frame. Often referred to as the cyclic redundancy check, CRC, it allows for integrity check of retrieved frames. As frames are about to be sent, the FCS is calculated and appended. When a station receives a frame, it can calculate the FCS of the frame and compare it to the one received. If they match, it is assumed that the frame was not distorted during transmission. Management frames are not always authenticated, and allow for the maintenance, or discontinuance, of communication. Some common 802.11 subtypes include The body of a management frame consists of frame subtype dependent fixed fields followed by a sequence of information elements, E's. The common structure of an E is as follows. Control frames facilitate in the exchange of data frames between stations. Some common 802.11 control frames include Data frames carry packets from web pages, files, etc. within the body. The body begins with an IEEE 802.2 header, with the destination service access points specifying the protocol, followed by a subnetwork access protocol, SNAP, header if it's PIS hex AA, with the organizationally unique identifier, WEIN protocol ID, PID, fields specifying the protocol. If the Wii is all zeros, the protocol ID field is an Ether type value. Almost all 802.11 data frames use 802.2 and snap headers, and most use an Wii of zero o'clock and an Ether type value. Similar to TCP congestion control on the Internet, frame loss is built into the operation of 802.11. To select the correct transmission speed or modulation encoding scheme, a rate control algorithm may test different speeds. The actual packet loss rate of an access points vary widely for different link conditions. There are variations in the loss rate experienced on production access points, between 10% and 80%, with 30% being a common average. It is important to be aware that the link layer should recover these lost frames. If the sender does not receive an acknowledgement, ACK, frame, then it will be resent. Within the IEEE 802.11 working group, the following IEEE standards association standard and amendments exist. 802.11F and 802.11T are recommended practices rather than standards, and are capitalized as such. 802.11 meters is used for standard maintenance. 
802.11 MA was completed for 802.11 to 2007, 802.11 MB for 802.11 to 2012, and 802.11 MC for 802.11 to 2016. Both the terms standard and amendment are used when referring to the different variants of IEEE standards. As far as the IEEE Standards Association is concerned, there is only one current standard. It is denoted by IEEE 802.11 followed by the date that it was published. IEEE 802.11-2016 is the only version currently in publication, superseding previous releases. The standard is updated by means of amendments. Amendments are created by task groups, TG. Both the task group and their finished document are denoted by 802.11 followed by a non-capitalized letter, for example, IEEE 802.11a and IEEE 802.11b. Updating 802.11 is the responsibility of task group M. In order to create a new version, TGM combines the previous version of the standard and all published amendments. TGM also provides clarification and interpretation to industry on published documents. New versions of the IEEE 802.11 were published in 1999, 2007, 2012, and 2016. Various terms in 802.11 are used to specify aspects of wireless local area networking operation, and may be unfamiliar to some readers. For example, time unit, usually abbreviated to is used to indicate a unit of time equal to 1024 microseconds. Numerous time constants are defined in terms of 2, rather than the nearly equal millisecond. Also the term portal is used to describe an entity that is similar to an 802.1H bridge. A portal provides access to the VLAN by non-802.11 LAN STAs. With the proliferation of cable modems and DSL, there is an ever-increasing market of people who wish to establish small networks in their homes to share their broadband internet connection. Many hotspot or free networks frequently allow anyone within range, including passers-by outside, to connect to the internet. There are also efforts by volunteer groups to establish wireless community networks to provide free wireless connectivity to the public. In 2001, a group from the University of California Berkeley presented a paper describing weaknesses in the 802.11 Wired Equivalent Privacy WEP, security mechanism defined in the original standard. They were followed by Flumer, Manton, and Shamir's paper titled Weaknesses in the Key Scheduling Algorithm of RC4. Not long after, Adam Stubblefield and AT&T publicly announced the first verification of the attack. In the attack, they were able to intercept transmissions and gain unauthorized access to wireless networks. The IEEE set up a dedicated task group to create a replacement security solution, 802.11i. Previously this work was handled as part of a broader 802.11e effort to enhance the MAC layer. The Wi-Fi Alliance announced an interim specification called Wi-Fi Protected Access, WBA, based on a subset of the then current IEEE 802.11i draft. These started to appear in products in mid-2003. IEEE 802.11i also known as WPA2, itself was ratified in June 2004, and uses the Advanced Encryption Standard ICE, instead of RC4, which was used in WEP. The modern recommended encryption for the home-slash-consumer space is WPA2, ICE pre-shared key, and for the enterprise space is WPA2 along with a radius authentication server, or another type of authentication server, and a strong authentication method such as EAPTLS. In January 2005, the IEEE set up yet another task group W to protect management and broadcast frames, which previously were sent unsecured. Its standard was published in 2009. In December 2011, a security flaw was revealed that affects some wireless routers with a specific implementation of the optional Wi Fi protected setup, WPS feature. While WPS is not a part of 802.11, the flaw allows an attacker within the range of the wireless router to recover the WPS pin and, with it, the router's 802.11i password in a few hours. In late 2014, Apple announced that its iOS 8 mobile operating system would scramble MAC addresses during the pre-association stage to thwart retail footfall tracking made possible by the regular transmission of uniquely identifiable probe requests. 
Benefits Many companies implement wireless networking equipment with non-IEEE standard 802.11 extensions either by implementing proprietary or draft features. Stop these changes may lead to incompatibilities between these extensions. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.